rather condone or uh, abide by this fucking recording session happening in my fucking kitchen. Psychedelic space beef band. God damn it. She's hungry for Mongolia barbecue and dick. Basically, what's going to happen is every week we're going to offer a stuff market. Yeah, okay. Do you realize how bad of an idea this was? This is an idiotic episode. Yeah, exactly. How bad shit, boys? It's like, what are you doing? Do you know what you're doing? Oh, shit, Obviously. we got to be over here. Like, how does it brand? 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 Like, as a friend, like, as a friend, come on, guys. Spanic open up. An incredibly poor decision and literally betrays everything that the beef session is about. A term a coined out of, you know, endless nights well, but, of but no, but endless the, the, alcohol. The issue is that if you so, say that you have beef with someone, that usually means that you don't get along. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and the fact that we but picked we that word, I don't even it. remember. I that. Why, it means why that we're just like, that it's I the love exact it. opposite. I'm, I'm a huge beef fan. I think it's great. I think well, it's really no, great. We'd it, love it to works. have you back on the podcast. No, and, it, and it, it's better for the meat, like, like for the intonation, because like beef in it, it's like beef. Yeah, it's beefy. It's cool. Hey, like, all right, welcome back to the show. This is show number 23. Another episode of the Lost Beat beef 6 show. show. Son of a bitch. Welcome back. So we got we got our, our, our panel, our group today. Yes. It's, it's me, your uh, Punish Steve, yours truly. We got, Punish Steve. We got, <laughs> we got uh, Eric. We got the DRE the drum, the, back on the mic. Yep. DRE. And we got Terry Gross. What's up? Hey. <laughs> and, Returning. And our guest today is, uh, is uh, uh, um, fuck. Come on, Gabs. Steve. Steve, come on. Steve. I'm leaving. <laughs> Steve, we're leaving. <laughs> we're leaving. <laughs> Steve, we're leaving. Okay. Is uh, anyway, we have Gabby Dizidi in in uh, Welcome in, to the show. Yeah, welcome Thanks. to the show. Hey. A visual a visual guy. artist, oh, makeup yeah. artist, and you are also uh, the lover of our fellow beefer Ryan. Allegedly. He's how's allegedly that, a beefer is what she means. <laughs> yeah. How's that how's that working out for you? Uh, so far so good. Four That's good. years. Four years. Damn, it's been four years. Yeah, he hasn't no, it has been. Yet. Yeah. Didn't you meet us that one night in uh, when? Uh, it's March first at the Kibitz Room. Whoa. Two thousand thirteen. <laughs> I was gonna say. Have that written down. That was hey, from memory. <laughs> let's let's talk about the movie Rain Man. <laughs> I was going to say the shoe mash night. It was the same one. <laughs> was that March 1st? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I, I did not that? remember the day. It, it was a friend's birthday of mine. I don't remember what I wore There was a lot more that happened that night. It was a friend's birthday. Wait, what is, is this, this when I met you guys? What? Uh, no, <laughs> I, 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 I had met you a couple times before, but that's the first time you met Jake. I don't remember that. Shoe ma- we were at Shoe Mash? No, we were at yeah. Shoe Mash. We did a point crazy point. ass adventure where we <laughs> left for the shoe mash at like eleven. Me and Jake got drunk on the car ride over, <laughs> continued to drink at the shoe mash, drove back to wherever that was, and <laughs> met you. And was Ryan there that night, Steve? Yeah. Okay. He had yeah. To have been. Yeah. Must that's, have been. That was, that was right before you guys. You were still friends at that point. Oh, it was before Just, we were dating? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, okay, yeah. I remember that. I probably remember that. Because it was in March. Yeah, I, I won't go into the details of the next morning, but it was a, it was an eventful trip. So. <laughs> but anyway. So. Been a while, yeah. It's been it's been a while. The last been. podcast? It's been a while. Jim and Ryan. <laughs> been a while. No. The last podcast. Hey, let's with, talk uh, about uh, the album uh, by Staint. <laughs> by, uh, I, do you even know the name of that album? Uh, so... Wait, what? Um, it's been a it's while. Been a you while. know, the classic chorus. The song by Stain. Yeah. Uh, I don't know any um, other words to that song except No that one does. does. There was well, a, on the Buzz Ballads commercial, they only play that one part of the song. <laughs> so you're not expected yeah. to know more. <laughs> so <laughs> one line. So just to plug another podcast during this podcast. Um, Here we that, go. Not again. I, that has been popularized by a episode of a podcast Ch- called Chapo Trap House. No, last fuck pod you. on the left. Sound Explorer. Steve Harmon Town. 
The Bill Simmons podcast. The Bill Simmons. <laughs> fucking Bill Simmons. God damn. Well, do, do you guys even want to hear the story? I don't know. I, do. honestly. I don't. All right. Nah. Was I'm just episode, trying to razz you. Was that an episode? <laughs> That's good. No, it's a... Uh, Legitimately, I don't want to disrail us too much. Legitimately, you are razzed right now. I am razzed. I'm struggling. I have been <laughs> razzed. <You're sweating. laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, nope. I, I, I feel like I should just crawl out of here on my hands and knees. He's asking me with his eyes for another shot of vodka, <laughs> and I'm going to oblige. Please, no. Here, no. No. Uh, so a good podcast called You Talking You Too to Me, which the concept Terrible of band. is uh, Terrible Fuck pod. You, Steve. It's uh, two people named Adam Scott and... Uh, and Bono. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Is it Scott, Adam Scott and Scott Adams? Scott Ackerman. <laughs> oh, Adam shit. Adam Scott, Scott Ackerman. Ackerman, two Scots. Ackerman is good. Scott I do Ackerman, like that guy. Adam Scott, also good. Yeah, cheers. All right. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you two. This is a train wreck, and I'm very sorry for Terry, everyone Terry, every involved. time you're on, it's a train wreck. It's every time you, this happens. You come up what and you're I, doing a thing. No, the, the podcast we did together talking about your album, that was good. That was good. That was the I only po- episode of this podcast but that's I've because you were, to. It was just wow. because you were running the podcast, and, and now I'm running the podcast, and you're doing this thing where you you, you go off on a tangent. I like feel like we've really been great so far. I don't know. I, you know, we're probably doing fine. You know, Steve, I'm starting to understand that time where I uh, I yelled at you a lot and said mean things about you. <laughs> That I regret. Do you mean the intro music? Yes, I mean <laughs> the intro music where I, I tell Steve that he's a disgrace. No, it was... Oh, I, no, 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 I think it was. Yeah, there were several witnesses that like remember talking to you in the garage. Uh, I was. I mean, there's not any. It's not interesting. It's just like garden variety. I was blackout drunk because I drank a half bottle of vodka and smoked probably close to a half eighth of weed. He gets very ornery. And then a half eighth uh, sounds about uh, right. uh, Someone started telling me like when I was that drunk and high. And no, it was uh, a it was a betrayal of everything that the B session was was about. Oh yeah, the the betrayal. Betrayal of what? Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's That's good wording. It was, that is good. That's the key word. I was I I had basically been turned into a monster rather than a man, <laughs> and someone had been had been spurring me on, but ultimately I cannot shift responsibility onto that person. It is my 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 sins, <laughs> and I I I, I embrace the sins of the arms. beaver. The sins never die <laughs> in the Father's hands. Something I don't remember the lyrics to uh, the sins of the Father. It's a Metal Gear Solid Five song. Do you remember that? I mean, why, why do you think I said that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm basically also metal, like, a, like, like I, I'm Solidus. <laughs> and I and think that, that that's, holds up. If you really analyze the lore. You know, I would I would have to relook at that that I'm dialogue. Sorry, we're, we're so goddamn off track. You know what? This is embarrassing. Yeah, I'm thanks. sorry, Steve. Yeah, you, you, you're welcome, Terry. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off the questions. Oh, this has been... This has been fine. I, I don't know what y'all are talking about. Hey, hey, actually, I'm sorry. I'm this it's it's been great. Work. It's been great, Eric. But we got to keep this question. thing going. Oh, go ahead. Gabby, are you a fan of Tears for Fears? Yes. Well, are, we, you, are, are you more of a, a a Roland girl or a Kurt girl? I'll, I'll you, take it all. You'll, okay. I, I agree. Not, I agree with that. I'm not picky, honestly. Okay. You got a double dip on, on both of them? <laughs> I will say I thought both had good stage presence. I expected one to take over, but they, they kept the role back and forth. I didn't get to see much of their performance because I was oh, backstage right. listening to the music. They do have the same voice, and they confirmed they do, that. They? Uh, my theory <laughs> for years was that they had the same voice. I can Seeing them live confirmed for I same can voice. Kind of the tell fact that there are three vocalists in that performance surprised me. I think there were four. I think the really drummer four? also had a mic. Yeah, you I can be tell right. between the two, though. You can only like, tell when know. Roland does his Roland voice. You when know they both what I normal. mean. It's yeah, a no, world no, he does crazy. His, he does it's his woman shit. and chain. That's definitely that's that's no, very he, much. He does Phil that Collins like voice. that's Can like an on purpose. <laughs> My fall when they're slower. singing together, they're indistinguishable. Yeah. Like yeah, Roland's got his voice, but you know the seeing them live, especially during "Everybody Wants to Rule the World" when they open, that was because yeah. that's the video where they're both singing, and you don't know who's singing live when they like cut to the band, like the footage of the band. Yeah. Because that's the only part where they're playing, you know. It's just Kurt driving, and he's, I, 
I think he might sing at one point, but when they cut to the band on the stage, they're both singing, and the, the cinematography doesn't show you who's the lead singer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can't tell, because they so, have the same voice. I, I had a really <laughs> weird experience where I was like at work, and I was like, yeah, I went to a Tears for Fears concert the other night, and none of the other people I work with, who are all more or less the same age as I am, didn't know who that was. And I'm like, I legitimately don't know who to ex- how to explain what Tears for Fears is. Do you work at they like a like, like a, uh, a night school or like a volunteer <laughs> for like special needs adults? <laughs> no, not so much. Okay, they, they knew it as the song. Then that from is Donnie surprising. Darko. It it is as I am, but a completely dysfunctional human being and should not have um, the job that I have. But um, you seem functioning well right now. Yeah, ish. Um, anyway, they knew it as the song from Donnie Darko. And I was like, I mean, that's not really it. But it's yeah. not wrong. You know, the part, they, they, they do have one. one of my, they do one have the best song in there. They were doing coke during that scene. I'm like, I don't remember if they were doing coke in the high they school were. scene. Were they? Mm-hmm. I have probably Johnny one Darko's small cutaway, but sure. It's a, anyway. it's like a one. Cu- it's a well, yeah. the scene's a one take like so, well, choreographed it, it, thing. In Donnie Darko, they play Mad World in the scene when the the Donnie Darko himself and his friends are taking the school bus to high school and then at the very end during the dramatic finale did you see Seth Rogen in there Gary Jewell's version I was of... gonna say it's a cover isn't it yeah, yeah. no no no, yeah. no, no. That's that's they, they play the head, no, no, no nope. more they play yeah. head over heels yeah. during that montage uh, they, they you see this they introduce the school and they show like a really young Seth Rogen they and like definitely a, play head the over original, heels the, the hurting version of the hurt of of uh, the Mad hurting World. chair no yeah no they Gary Jewell's does Mad World and then they do uh, head over heels Wait, I'm is Mad World pretty, also in Don, Donnie Darko? Pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, but it's, it's a, a cover. It's a cover. Steve. It's a cover. It's the, Gary ah. it's the one they keep showing in like like a pop. I thought that post-apop. cover was like 2004. No, it was no. a little earlier. But they 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 would pop it up in like like Gears of War ads and well, shit. I know that. I thought you were saying the Gary Jules version was in Donnie Darko. It was. It, it is. It is. hundred oh. percent. But what we're saying is that damn. Is the Consider question, me. but head hey, over Eric, heels hey, surprised. Eric. Hey Eric. Hey the you. The question is. Is the uh, studio version of the, of Mad World from the Hurting on the Donnie Darko soundtrack? No, and I'm saying it is, but I don't remember. Oh, it probably it might be, but it's not in the movie. I, I feel like the movie. better question is: Is <laughs> the studio the version better than Gary Jules? And the answer is, is. yes, yes, it, yes. <laughs> Getting away from that, they also played the one non Tears for Fears song they played. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that was, was creep. I was like, wait, they're not going to do it. Did you get my text? I got your text, okay. but I didn't see it until after I the show. Play fucking you creep. Like that? that was honestly not that good. No, it wasn't, yeah. a, it I was wasn't laughing, a good cover. I was they laughing didn't really do anything stage. with it. I, I don't want to talk shit on Tears for Fears because no. they're an incredibly good band. You can talk shit on Tears but for Fears. Do you think they forgot you the words? Or do you think they just were like, we should just change the words here? They, they, uh... That, I mean, they that, definitely did not sing the words that you know, Thom York or whatever is saying. They didn't say fucking, they but that, say my fun. problem was they that the end, they they just did a lower energy version yeah, of creep, which is a low energy really song to begin with. Yeah, it wasn't. So I was, was like, like ah, that's, okay, that's, that's like a let's creep done by like a cover band that's not as good, which wasn't what I wanted from Tears for Fears. You know, I, I, I would say it was Every's like fun. It Honestly, wasn't bad, but I, I just didn't know why they were doing it. Every yeah. song that I liked, they played. They were like, I was like, oh, same. Yeah. yeah. That is true. So As I can't I complain told you about in it. The car right over here. I was, I, I was trying to remember the concert in retrospect, and I'm like, they didn't play Pale Shelter. And then uh, I was like, kind of angry about that. Not angry, but disappointed. And then uh, my friend played me a recording of them playing Pale Shelter at the concert. And I <laughs> completely forgot that he played it. And I'm like, well, that's some egg in my face. And I feel bad. But you can, I'm glad they played it because it's a very good song. Yeah, and is you can go on like, these music blogs. You can always find someone where they have a set list for the show. Yeah. Uh, There's like a well, dedicated website that has every major act's set, set list, list. Yeah, uploaded. Really I was like... Within the same night slash next yeah. morning. Yeah. This was literally that I was like talking to my roommate who also saw the concert with me. I'm like, yeah, kind of bummed that they didn't play Pale Shelter. And they played the song Pale Shelter for him. And he's like, they played this song. And I'm like, no, nah, they didn't. And he's like, yeah, they did. I have a video of it. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure they didn't play Pale Shelter. <laughs> and he's like, here's the video. And I'm like, 
Like, well, oh, no, that's, that's this seems pretty shelter. damning Shit. here. All right. <laughs> I guess they played Pale Shelter. It was a good version. Guess, guess I forgot. No, but. Sorry. What I thought would be the best Tears of Fear show. Yeah. Would be, you know, after I heard from uh, Steven Martinez that they opened with Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Yeah. I was like, if they open with that, close with Head Over Heels and Encore with Shout, then I'm good. And that's exactly what they yeah. did. Yeah, wow. I called that one. Such a good show. So yeah. I was like, this, this, this is what I wanted. You know, uh, I, I, you always forget how early the curfew is at the bowl. When they busted out Head Over Heels, I was like, wait, are they playing it early? And then when they left, I was like, okay, that was the last song. Yeah. But, but it was so good. I was happy they played the, ba- uh, the Badman song. Yeah. This is a bad man. No. Anyway. Uh, They're that, set, and the backing band was great. Yeah. That's the set, drummer was, was awesome. Their lead guitarist was good. good. Yeah. Roland actually flubbed a couple uh, riffs in Shout, and <laughs> I think uh, Kurt screwed up a line in uh, Mad World. So they, they actually weren't quite as solid as the backing band, but they don't, you know. They're not paid to be, you know, like studio musician quality. They're paid to be like, yeah, we wrote these been, songs. But yeah, but like, they were known for like doing a lot of their own production on those albums. Uh, production almost, and like virtuosity are one things or separate things. Eh, not necessarily. You you can be very creative in the studio and not be, you know, like a fucking. Yeah, but guy these that guys, but these guys were pretty good. Oh, they're good. But yeah. I'm saying, like, you know, they've got the younger guys, you know, oh, handling okay. oh, all oh, that. All right, yes, yes. ageist. <laughs> anyway, uh, overall, good show. Good show. Solid. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Best one new, out, best new concert. I've been to what? One of my favorite shows that I've been to recently. That's good. All right. So, so capping that. So we're here again. And Gabs, thanks for coming on the show. How'd you like the brisket? You like, yeah. It was how, awful. Yeah. Steve should throw a smoke. How damn, Steve? Yeah, it's how'd you fucking how are, we literally how fed are the it to lost the dog. beat six fries? <laughs> I fed it to the dog so many times. How how are the fries? The fries were amazing. Good job, Eric. Thank, Thank you. For you. That. Good. Thank you. So changed much. my life. How are, how are the vegetables? Fries are, they're a religious experience. Oh, I didn't have any, uh, they're pretty. Steve, charred. I actually didn't have any of the vegetables either. I'm gonna have. Well, I know you. I know. I like, never eat the veggies. You don't eat vegetables. I don't like yeah, expect I, anybody I, but you me. You guys have vodka. That's potato based. They are very tasty, but brisket is better. In every applicable way, I think I that's the same. Not, and brisket before. is better is going to be true ninety nine percent of the time. I'm saying ninety five, but that's okay. Sure, go ahead and knock your own brisket down, Steve. Oh, oh, you're t- oh, I was talking to him. I'm well, sorry. Looking at me, damn it! Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you were agreeing with him that he you was know, right ninety nine percent of the time. All right, back up. Food. All right, all right. This is getting out this again. This isn't going to become Alex's... Uh, uh, Alex uh, fucks over my report. podcast one more time? Yeah. One more yeah, Steve. time. Hey, who, who asked me to be on here? I did, because I wanted Terry Gross back, Terry, and I think, Terry, you're doing a great job. All right. <laughs> you know, it just... Steve, you know, I just I always was, forget that this happens. Steve, your barbecue was phenomenal, and I uh, very much liked it. I appreciate it that. It was delicious. I enjoyed your meat, Steve. So, Gabs, I got... All right, let's start the questions. So, Gabs, I got, a, I got a series of questions for you, and some of them are pretty bad. He says that now. I'm nervous. So, so you, 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 you dabble in the visual arts. Yes. And so you're, you're an artist, right? People call me that. Are you a performance artist? I'm not. Mm. Well, that was a great show, everybody. We're all happy to have you guys here. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Show. Was and I supposed to give a really deep answer and say that everyone's well, yeah, a performance I, artist? No, it's just... It was a, it was a thing. I, I, have, I didn't it, know it, we were going right into it. it otherwise, requires, I would have put see, it See, that's why you need to read the notes that you I asked for. I did read for. the notes. You, you did? just went right into it. Well, yeah. Yeah, I walked over, and then it was like, we're on. Oh. Steve, Wait, why did you get the note? Just bring your phone over. This is why I get after you sometimes. No, I'm doing a fucking fine job, man. I'm doing okay. <laughs> Fuck you. That's okay. We, enough, this Steve. doesn't happen when you're here. <laughs> I doubt that. Actually, the other way around. But anyway, so yeah, so you're not a performance artist. I don't consider myself one now. Okay. I can say yes if you need me to say yes. Do you know what yes. that means? No. Uh, we didn't. I don't think we played that particular we d- video. No, she night. has seen Gachi Muji. <laughs> I correct. It. <laughs> I, I remember that. It really is <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> but I don't think we that showed, like, video was explicitly played that night. That one was too. We played both of them. Because we, we played the original one that you played, and I—that's my favorite one—is the the. Uh, that's a good one. Do you remember that night? 
um, when we did the all first those years ago, all those years ago, where we did that podcast with in Jim Eric's Garage. And we drank box wine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was terrible wine. <laughs> it was. Yeah. I felt like garbage later. Yeah. Do you Do you remember like I drank enough to feel Jim's right? Jim's videos. No, not Jim's, <laughs> Jim's <laughs> videos. <laughs> are the most memorable thing. <laughs> Because yeah, that's seared into my brain. <laughs> yeah, that was that was wonderful. That I think only that for breeze. That for breeze. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that, that got me. <laughs> it's like okay, yeah. Do you remember like that that group of videos that we played that were like gay pants gay, wrestling? Yeah. Oh, vaguely. I have yeah, really yeah, bad yeah. memory. Hell um, yeah. Yeah. Basically, one of those guys is Van Darkholm, and he's an artist. He's a performance artist. Oh, just like me. Yeah. So, okay. There we go. I told exactly. you I would say yes if you needed me to. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. you We're going to edit out all yes. the parts yeah. where you comment <laughs> about it. The <laughs> last going to be, yes, I'm a performance artist. <laughs> the Lost Beach Sick Show is very much a yes and kind of show. <laughs> yeah. I liked how you almost said the Lost Beach Sick Sick. Oh, fuck. Shit show? Shit show. <laughs> this is definitely a shit show, as it is any time I'm involved. That's true. I'm but just think, agreeing. We're getting gold. <laughs> as, as Bill Simmons, there's a lot of comment. As Bill Simmons would say, this content. Is, this is great. <laughs> this is great content. This is great content right now. So anyway, um, you you're, you're, you usually do medium. Your medium. Let's just talk about your visual art. Okay. Your your doodles. That's a great idea for a radio show. Your doodles. So everyone can see them. I'll post them on the. Site. <laughs> I, I make it. I make it work. Anyway, we post. Uh, <laughs> I post. I used to post. Did you? I made uh, one one joke too far. Yeah, let's. Uh, <laughs> let's hear. Let's, let's hear so, um, you usually, is your media? It's mostly pen, right? Pen and pencil. Well, makeup now. No, no. We're talking about your visual. Just your your. Oh yeah, it's pen. And, it's just, it's ballpoint pen. Ballpoint. So how, how did cardboard. you how did you develop that style punk rock style? That's a really terrible thing to say. You got like a. I'd say it's more psychedelic, if anything. Okay, I can dig psychedelic. Yeah. What were your uh, influences? Uh, nope, no, nope, can't answer. Can't ask that question. That's a thing. Ryan's gonna get pissed off at me, and I don't want to deal with well, it. Well, fuck. I right. want to know how you developed. I'm sorry, I'm trying to fuck. help, Steve. Jesus Christ! I want to know how you developed. <laughs> like, how how did you not not your influences, but how did you end up? <laughs> How did you end wow. up? Oh no! We shut didn't ask this question for slightly different means. Why don't we tell us the guy to go fuck himself? Holy. Sorry, Steve. That was uh, ten percent harsher than I wanted it to be. Yeah. I actually still have the first drawing I did in that style, and it's on a piece of cardstock that I found in my um, office at the time. It's not a fun story. It's nothing interesting. Were I just you, like, started doodling. A, were you going through like a phase? No, I was I was in middle school and I was bored and I thought I would draw something and the patterns came out. And that's how I got playing music. Not that I, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. I forgot you played. Bored in middle school. I forgot you were in the band. Yeah. That's how I know all you Selective fuckers. Memory. He's actually the reason I if joined I the band. If I wasn't <laughs> bored in middle school, I would have never have met any of you people. Is he the reason you left the band too? No, it's okay. If it wasn't for board in middle school, I would never would have learned to play bass, and I would have never met any of you. That's very true. Yeah, actually, yeah if you never played bass, I, we wouldn't. Actually, no. you guys would become decent friends with Nick, so there was a chance. So, maybe, hey. maybe. Welcome that to the was, show, Jack. What's up, little boy? In sixth grade. So. I'm sorry for being loud. No, that's fine. You're good. That was not convincing, Steve. No, I, <laughs> that was actually the most sincere I've been the whole night. Been, yeah, it's fine. I've ruined more of Steve, you know, podcasts. Than All right, um, next question. So yeah, you know, it was just is that was just sort of a natural thing. Yeah, it just happened. There's no uh, fun story to it. Okay, well that's 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 just naturally deep dark Sorry. fantasies. Deep dark fantasies. Boy next door. Boy next door. <laughs> Make me come. That turns me on. It's so fucking deep. <laughs> you know I don't do anal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, that, that's where we were at, right? <laughs> that's where we're at, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, moving I on. I mean, I'm sorry, Steve, to tell you, I don't want to go back into my wheelhouse of telling you that your podcast is bad. Because I have to say, legitimately, I've really liked this podcast when I've listened to it in the past. Where, like, uh, but this this podcast is bad, man. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be talking about Van Darkholm this much on your goddamn podcast. You know, who talks about Van Darkholm on their podcast? 
No. You're a podcast guy. No one yeah. for good reason. Good <laughs> reason? Good reason? You know, good reason? Maybe maybe it's a good idea you leave Terry. I, I think maybe you're... Maybe it's a good idea. Is that Terry, I think you might need to step out and yeah. have a bowl with Jake. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. I think when you come back, you'll realize that Van Darkham was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. I think so. Are you guys going to make him write a paper about it? <laughs> Is that his homework? Yeah, let's get on the chalkboard. <laughs> Van Dark home. So, Gabs, why are you into drag? Ooh. Why am I into drag? Yeah. Do you want the short answer or do you want the long answer? I want the We're long answer. We're on the podcast. Give me the okay, long answer. I'll give you the long answer. Yeah. Um, I was in elementary school, and it probably started around uh, kindergarten, or I, was, I just started getting teased for not being like girly enough but i obviously like wasn't a boy ice cold yeah kindergarten it was harsh damn so yeah yeah i know it, it seems early right like i didn't it, know it you had a concept of gender but five they, years early yeah they kind of forced me to have a concept of gender so i was damn. always teased for like being you know too too masculine and but not an actual boy so i never like fit in with the boys either and uh, i think the full realization that like something was off or weird was in fifth grade when we had those um, classes or I guess like seminars where they separated the boys and the girls and they like talked to the boys about their weenies and they talked to the girls about yeah. their vaginas. They me how to wash was the year I remember. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, they, I didn't, like, they didn't teach me that dude taught me how to wash my hands. <laughs> Isn't that kind of intrinsic? <laughs> Don't you just kind of know how it, to wash it explains your hands? A lot, I mean, it explains a lot more now than it, you know, <laughs> than it does then. Because I know how to wash my hands really well. But I'm not really good at everything else. <laughs> I'm just trying too hard. Anyway, can you please go on? Oh, yeah, no, so we got separated, and of course I was in the girls' line, and I was being made fun of, and basically everyone just called me a dyke for, the, like, my whole life, and I, I'm not a lesbian. Yeah, no, I Damn. mean, not, they didn't call me a dyke, but they were like, oh, you're a lesbian, and I, I, it, it was very strange. I, I don't know. I mean, even still. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah, that seems very... That dyke would have been, like, like, hmm. That seems yeah. early. But, you know... Did that cost you to lash out and overreact to it at all? Well, no, it just kind of had me question, like, well, why, why am I that way? Like, why am I, what, what makes me not feminine enough? Right. Like, what are they seeing just by looking at me that they're saying, oh, you're, you're, you're different. You don't look like that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know the answer to that. And so it kind of yeah, created. Yeah, in fifth grade, that'd be, it'd be difficult. Yeah. And even like in middle school, you know, the same thing kind of happened and it kind of like forced me to question, like. It, it kind of forced me to realize that it was like such a big gray area, mm -hmm. and that's, I mean, that's what drag is. Did you is. resent them for a while? I still do. <laughs> good, good. I'm a bitter Betty. Uh, I'm no, right yeah, with that. It, it's, I mean, drag is just, it's gray, it's gray area and gender, and I love that. And I think anything that says fuck you to anything if standard I, is, is great to my, to If I have eyes. to say, at Sabo 10 Con in Phoenix in 2016, one of the best panels we went to was the uh, cross play panel. Was Dax there? I don't remember anyone's Wait, name. Is that the one where they asked if we were gay or straight? Is that the right one? That was. And I told them we weren't gay, but we were willing to learn. <laughs> that was your response. <laughs> but that That's was a, a good different answer. panel. It was. Oh, that was a great answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> that particular panel was not the crossplay panel. Okay, that was like the weird kinky shit, right? Oh yeah, that was like the cos cosplay confessions or like convention yeah. confession confessions or something Ooh. like that. Yeah, it was it was like at a you know a midnight panel of like you know the oddballs that it are in like this like sweltering panel. heat and then you know Phoenix dressed <laughs> up as whatever you know. But um, <clears throat> yeah, no, fuck them. Uh, yeah, uh, that basically yeah, that that, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> back back, it, if I remember fifth grade right, you know. It was me and my buddy. Uh, we had a substitute teacher, so instead of doing a book report, we were allowed to draw Dragon Ball Z on the whiteboard oh, for credit. Nice. <laughs> because our substitute was a cool surfer, surfer dude that liked us. So I was having a little different experience. I'm yeah, sorry to say like, that it was that bad. School always sucked for me, and I don't really... I, like Looking back, I don't really know why, because... The weirdest thing is I was always miserable in school. Like everyone always teased me. I felt like, you know, no one liked me. I had maybe three or four friends that I really latched onto. And then I would, especially high school, I would run into these people from high school, like people that were actually like, like 
mean to me, like directly mean to me and like like rude to me and said horrible things, I would Damn. see them like five years later and they would act like we were friends in high school and like, you know, oh, what, wow. what are you doing? You were so cool. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> fuck you, off. you ruined my Wednesday. Do you not remember that? <laughs> I'm not in high school anymore. The only thing that stopped me from kicking your ass is the goddamn law. You know? I actually I'm going to walk away. <laughs> I had one guy, um, Ryan knows the story, I think. Um, I was in ninth grade and... He was, he was just, he was like, he was like one of those kids. was like an asshole. He was like a like class clown. Like Ninth always getting into the principal. graders are yeah. some of like the peak. Yeah, you know, he, was, like... he was a piece of shit. And he came, he came right up to my face. I don't think he even knew me, so I didn't even take it that personally. I was just like, whatever. Sure. But he came right up to my face and he went, you're pretty ugly, you know that? And I was like, I, like, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I was what, just what like, what do you say okay. to that? Yeah, yeah, I was just like, okay. And he left. I like, put him up. Here we go. Six <laughs> years later, this motherfucker adds me on Facebook and asked me out. And I was like, do you not remember high school? <laughs> they don't. You know, they, they, <laughs> and they're some dumbass motherfuckers. The, the funny thing was, he didn't know who I, he didn't realize I was the same person. He didn't even realize that was me. Could it be that stupid people are incredibly retarded? <laughs> so where does drag come in? Like I said, it's just a big fuck it's, you. It, it's, okay. Yeah, it's, 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 ca- it's, it's counterculture by definition. Okay. I Plus, there's it. like a whole artistry behind it too, like, which, we're, which we're, just yeah. fascinates me. Yeah. Do, do you have particular artists you respect in the industry, like drag artists or inspirations? Yeah. Um, I mean, the old school ones. I'm a huge fan of the Club Kids '90s scene. Very um, kind of party lifestyle. Do whatever you want. Very similar to Beef in It. I oh, think. you're goddamn yeah. right. You know, do it, do it, do what we, makes you happy. We'd probably get along better with drag queens than we would everyone else. You would. That's you such a very good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, you know, we're not we're not drag, but we're willing to learn. <laughs> Yeah. I can put you Fuck both it. in drag. <laughs> yeah. All right, Steve. Uh, <laughs> if you're down, I'm down, I guess. That'd be can funny. we get a commitment? <laughs> I have to think about that. I can make you a ghetto course. That would make AX a lot more can interesting. Can we do it for AX? <laughs> we'll I don't know if we can do we'll AX. Down, <laughs> in the... No, we'll go on karaoke. We'll sing. <laughs> I, if we if we do drag, we have to do karaoke. Yeah, they, <laughs> I, I, you know, Jake's, I, Jake's, already, Jake's already one step ahead of us. He's oh. already got the maid thing oh, going. Hold on. That's true. He's got the what? Uh, we'll, we'll get to this, but just give me a second. Are you familiar with the band X Japan? Oh. Okay. <laughs> if you can dress us like X Japan, <laughs> then Steve, we're going to have what to sing called? tears at, <laughs> at AX. They're called X Japan, like the letter X and then Japan. Dry your tears with love. <laughs> you could be Yoshiki. You could play the key, the piano and the drums. Oh, shit. <laughs> nice. Oh, I could totally do this. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So we'll get to that bridge oh, in July of next them. year. But anyway, um, so yeah, the, uh, the, the scene in the 90s was something you respected. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it like most great art forms, it grew from oppression, so. Oh, yeah. How can you not love it? You, you can relate to that if you were a weird kid in, in elementary school and middle school and high school and adult life. I don't think there's any normal beefers out there. <laughs> was there a moment for you where that just like clicked, like, oh, like you found out it was a thing and it was just like, oh, shit, Yeah, no, there, de- there like 100% was, and it was like a very classic. I was homesick from school, and uh, the first season of RuPaul's Drag Race was playing. Oh, really? In, in its entirety, yeah. And I, I like, kind of knew what drag was, but I, I was 17 at the time, so and this was in... Um, 2007 so it was before obviously like drag was a little more mainstream so i knew i knew you know i I knew it existed but to see it the thing with the show that's really interesting is that they show the they show the queens getting getting ready so Mm -hmm. you see them as men and you see them like through their process so just to see them go for like some of them are these like buff tattooed like you know are, are they men, <laughs> and they turn into these like beautiful like walking forms of art that can you know sing and dance and perform. So it's it's pretty cool to see that transition. Does that kind of come out of like a burlesque culture where it's a lot of satire involved? No, like... the the roots are actually a lot more sad, and they 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 stem more from um, black people, people of color, I guess, and um, gay men were all kind of like lumped into the same category, oh, okay. and that's where the ball scenes came out, and the the whole like at dressing as a woman stemmed from dressing as something that you're not. So the pageants would have categories. 
and you would dress as a woman in a gown. Okay. You would also dress as a businessman, and you would dress as things that were like unattainable or unreachable at the time. Okay. Because oh. I mean, well, now you that now makes you, sense, yeah. Yeah, now I, you, you I, can yeah. you know live part time as a woman if you want, and no one questions it as much. But you know, sure. in, in the seventies, I mean, it, it goes way further back. But oh, I bet when the yeah. pageants were were happening, I think fifty sixties were when they started having like actual pageants happen. Has that been more uh, effective on your your? career as a makeup artist and, yeah I and mean as well as like a visual as a well as uh, like a visual artist uh, when I started doing makeup I actually stopped doing visual art uh, like pen and paper just because okay. I kind of use faces as a canvas now okay, as, cool. as stupid as that sounds not it really sounds that's like what, uh, practical that's yeah what, it's, well that's what the tattoo artists consider skin as a canvas so yeah yeah it's, it's similar I mean this is just like removable tattoos I guess it's <laughs> removable art. right so um, you you were currently working on on like films and TV yeah, shows. Yeah, I just set TV and um, TV and film. Okay. Where, where you, Indie uh, sets. Is there? A, we're not going to ask you to name your projects, but um, how how has it been working on that compared to your, you know the previous experience? I got lucky. Two of my friends were starting a production company, so I got on board with them. I was their go-to makeup artist. I still oh, am. Nice. So that that was lucky. Usually, when you're in the first two years of makeup, you don't get that lucky. You have to do a lot of free work. Yeah, it's it um, seems tough to make it. There's a lot of competition. Yeah, from what I hear. The first movie I worked on was actually um, a drag queen movie. A lot of the girls oh, okay. from the Drag Race were in it. I was the um, I'm not credited because I'm the assistant to the assistant makeup artist. Right, right. Which means he just brought me on set because I was his friend and I really wanted to be around the drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> I For like sure. I powdered some people and did some hair. <laughs> right. So how how would that because you have a you have a pretty good Instagram following. That's like the place where you can post your own. No, I don't. Never mind. You have a, <laughs> not yet. You, you have, Once okay. you get this under Scratch your belt. Scratch that. So so you have so you have like an Instagram account that posts like your own your own kind of designs. Yeah, you, my usually, Instagram's you, not Usually really you're the one. You're you're the model in the yeah. in that case. And how is how is that? Obviously, there's a clear difference between what you're doing to yourself and what you're doing for like. For TVs and movies, because that's very yeah. more utilitarian. Yes. But uh, how how would you say that differs as like a thought process or a or a creative process for you to switch on a completely aesthetic like one time only makeup session? Um, I don't think it differs that much, to be perfectly honest. I just <laughs> think with my you know more drag oriented looks, it's just I just have a little more creative freedom, but. Otherwise, it's still the same thing. I still have a face. I still have to work around features, accentuate certain features. Um, obviously, in drag, I accentuate different features in different ways. I, I eliminate them sometimes completely, which is fun too. But I mean, beauty makeup and drag makeup—they're technically very different. But I think as an art form, they're they're similar. You're, mm. you're, you're still you're still painting a face. Right, it's you're like brass and string instruments. You yeah, know. you're you're still creating an image that you want people to see, and it has to portray something. Mm -hmm. Is there something uh, kind of in the? Is, do you find something in the moment when you're doing like when you're when you're doing yourself on the uh, just like cause is that a design that you keep down the road? Is it just one time and then move on? There are elements I recycle. Um, for my drag looks, actually, I always have to work off of a face chart. Okay. It's really hard for me to wing it. Um, I think that just comes from an experience, to be perfectly honest. I've only been doing it two years. Sure. So I, I'm trying to get better at, at winging it. It's like the it. bar chords of uh, yeah, it, makeup. It's... So this is also your first time beefing it for reals. On a public level, yes. On a public level. How are you enjoying it? I love it. It's great. I relate to it. I think it's a very um, necessary movement to have right now, to be honest. I think everyone Would needs Would you that. recommend this amount of alcohol that you've seen me and Alex take to anyone? Not for the faint of heart. Also, not anyone less than 80 pounds. Or 180 pounds. <laughs> Packing it on here. Yeah, no, uh, th this is what happens here. It used to happen in 2015 when we were talking about earlier. All the goddamn time. The you beginning. Know, we we try to keep it up, but you know it's a, uh, it's Ad a thing. Adulthood ways. Adulthood yeah. ways. We're just now trying to exploit it and spread the message. Because I'm not trying to exploit it. I'm trying to. I'm being exploited. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, never I don't mi mind a goddamn bit. Uh, never mind. Um, this was gonna happen anyway. <laughs> it's it's it's. A, I think it's a good message. Beefing is inevitable. 
Beefen is eternal. Beefen is, uh, you know, something Negus invented, which is a separate <laughs> podcast. I mean, I think it, I think it, it transcends. A separate video game. I think a separate it transcends cinematic this podcast. universe. Yeah. A separate it, it, company altogether. In other altogether. forms, it's, it's existed over the decades. That's the, that's the thing that I... You're I'm, right. I'm trying to... Ex- yeah, I'd love to explain and how it's... every Everybody has their own way of beefing it since... Since they... Since maybe the birth of alcohol. Yeah. I don't know if everybody has their own way. Some people can't beef it. No, there's... It's not their, not their own way like they, they're consciously doing it, but they're... Like, the way we have... Beefing it is a conscious effort. No, no, it's it's a like it's a it's in a way where we're taking it consciously, but there have been beefers in the past who have beefed it. They just didn't see it. They didn't call it the same thing. I mean, the words they only didn't call it the for same for thing. Years. Yeah, that's what but I mean. They knew what they were doing. I mean, yeah, they would call what they called it back then. If they saw us, they'd be like, "They're doing that." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we see them and we're like, they're beefing it, you know. Yeah, that's true. Like, there's, uh, there, there's, you know, we'll, we're putting, you know, eventually the Beefer Hall of Fame. It transcends language and time. It's true. I mean, we got, we got, the Beefers have included everybody from like Hunter S. Thompson and Plato, Plato, Socrates, um, same thing, Gregory Rasputin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Kerouac. Hemingway. He's one of the hardest beefers. He was. <laughs> <laughs> that guy went so hard. That, that's more my style. I, uh, that's, yeah, I would agree. I would, I would, it's, um. If I could die of liver failure at 36, like a millionaire, you know, I, I think Is I Is he 36? Might, You're uh, working on it. I thought it was 40 something. Yeah, hey, it may have been older. It may have been 46. Yeah, 40 something. He was like in his 30s when on the road, kind of, like late 20s when on the road happened. I think it was his mid 20s. He was born like twenty. I think he, two he, or he may have. I think he wrote it. On the road starts in like forty-seven. Yeah, but he wrote it in like when his like early thirties, right? It got published. It was like a seven-year process to get. Published. Well, yeah, he wrote like ten books in between. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. A whole and then thing. the Dharma bums. <laughs> but you know, I, I think there's a couple other podcasts that may have explained the history of uh, Jack Kerouac a little bit better than <laughs> we, we could do right now. So I like the abridged look. version. <laughs> The, the abridged version is on point. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, beefing is Getting healthy. Beef, beefing is healthy. If no, you, I mean, not it, if you it's healthy mentally. <laughs> that's why I meant. That's like the healthiest I was thing qualifying you can do it. God damn it! Are, are, excuse me. <sighs> anyway, it's the extremes. I'm still burping brisket. I'm not gonna lie. Burp. I have me too. Welcome to beefing it. <laughs> yeah. It, there's like a list of like, if someone would ask, what does beefing it mean? I'm still burping brisket. <laughs> that's that's under, that's like the you know in the Webster's. You know, that's like one of like you know the C. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also means. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a, it's a good way. I think it's what the world world. It's what it's what we need right now. Yeah, like yeah, Eric said, it's inevitable. I think to be honest. Yeah. Life sucks. Take a break. Yep. Kick it with friends. And brisket. do the things you like yeah. with beef. Yeah. If it doesn't involve actual, you know, apart from a cow, like you can get away with it. But I would say, as a purist beefer, to be no. fair, you said you mastered the art of beef before I even brought the whole steak, you know, beef. I did physical beef into the thing. I did, but the, the food part of beefing it was never a component until you showed up. That's true. That's my contribution to the whole thing. It, it is, and I it's greatly important. appreciate it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> me too. It's yeah. It's it's the uh, yeah. You, it's the whole potluck. Get everybody together and enjoy good food while we're enjoying each other's company. It's, it's like pretty- the the George Harrison Harrison of beef in it. You know, we're like anime and vodka, are like the Lennon McCartney. That <laughs> works, like the Harrison, like, like really the, he's, the, the he's actual my, beef. Am I the Ringo food. in the situation? I don't even know. I think the Ryan's the Ringo in the situation. <laughs> It's gotta be a concept, though. I'm the Pete like best. Anime and vodka. Are I, I appreciate Lennon McCartney. I appreciate but like that eating because beef is like the Harrison. Harrison's actually one of my f- is like my favorite writer of the Beatles because I like every yeah. Me one too. Of the songs. Fuck yeah. It Amen. had to be good to, to make the cut. Ryan and I actually had this discussion: who had the better love songs, George Harrison or John Lennon? George Harrison. It's George Harrison. Yeah. We went through almost every single one of their songs, Beatles and it does Solo. Does not surprise me. John Lennon was a special individual. Was he a beefer? You know, I don't know if John was. I don't he, think he, he was. was. Part, he was part time in the no, seventies. No, in the seventies, he was hanging out with beefers like Harry Nilsson. Yeah, but I don't think Harry he was Nilsson's ever a, a beefer. beefer. Nah, he he was. He, I mean, there, there, you got to at least know how to take it easy on some level. I feel like 
Lennon may have always been kind of neurotic. Yeah. Just just sort of angry. There's got to be part of you that could be like, all right, let's fucking... <laughs> Let's see some beef. Okay. So, um, it was a thing we tried to do early on, like Queefer or Beefer, and it, it was Queefer like, of the Week. Oh, that's fun. I like yeah. that. Queefer or Beefer. Yeah. Yeah. Is that... Okay, I got a question for you. Is that... Is that... Do you, Are you... I don't think you're offended easily, but would you find that offensive if, if it was like, like on a sexist level if someone's a Queefer? If you're asking me if it is sexist, yes. If you're asking me if I'm offended, No. I mean, Personally. yeah, yeah, I figured that much, but it, so I mean, like by definition, if we kept it using is, the word queefer, would people? I mean, I don't think Eric cares. I don't. I know, yeah, but like, like. I mean, you're implying someone who queefs is lame, and the only people that queef are women. Or you can make ideally. the argument queefer comes from the word bequeef, which means to give up. But it doesn't. You just said that. You just, just admitted that it doesn't. No, no, I did. Wait, what? Back, backtrack. What did I just say? You said you could argue that. Yeah. You can make the argument that queefing means to be queef. But that's not what you're talking about. Well, it is now. <laughs> so I can change that. Just like I can say DRE is the drunk retarded Eric because he's drunk and slowing down. <laughs> he is. It's happening. You know, that's that's why we call him the DRE. So. And we, we had that discussion where he was like, means retarded like, like stupid. I'm like, no, it means like slow. Like, to, like to actually slow, down, slow, yeah. Like the root. To retard something. Yes. Yeah. There's no more brisket on the so floor. Is there a way, so that, that would be to bequeath something could be, we can short it to queefing it. Queefers. What do you Sorry. think? What well, do you think? Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking like you... <laughs> Eric left the room for a moment. Yeah, came let, back. Let, let, let's I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting you could spin the argument of queefing it. Queefers. Are people who I'm not be, going to who people who bequeath. spin queefing in some sort of positive light. Okay. Well, we usually just say it because it's Wait, funny. What? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's yeah. beef or queef of the week. Yeah. What 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 have we? I was asking if it, being that we have a female no. person on the show, I know she's not personally offended, but I want to know if that would be found offensive. Yeah, sure, it might be offensive. All right. Isn't that the? Isn't that like kind of go against the whole beef in it? It does. Uh, no. Well, yeah. 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 No, it, yeah. It, if you, beaver's not supposed to if, care. You know, if you're not critically <laughs> not thinking enough, I just I just want to be you know just offended aware. by everything. I, just well, if based someone on comes up to me and says, "I think norms. that's offensive to women," I can explain why it's not. Oh, okay. That's my that's my whole thing. I need to find. So you're just looking for an excuse to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need an excuse to say it. <laughs> I want to have one in my back. Real beef. I want to have the imposter. I want to have the one in my back pocket. I'm yeah. <laughs> He's a George. <laughs> Ringo. We found Ringo. <laughs> Ringo was amazing, by the way. He was the humorist. He was the glue. He was an alcoholic. He was a great drummer. Yeah. He was an okay drummer. There he was were, a good there... drummer. No, no, he was a good drummer. He had great tone. <laughs> no, he's a good drummer. I don't drummer. think he picked his tone. Pete Best was better. That is, that's a fucking hipster pick, and you know it. I've actually never heard Pete Best drum. I know you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone? I just... <laughs> Maybe maybe when they did the Tony Sheridan Fucking days, Beatle nerds. Like, <laughs> when they did that, like little like oh, my bon- when they played album? when they when they did Tony Sheridan, like my Bonnie lies over the. Year. They did a cover of that. <laughs> I have a coworker named Bonnie who's sixty five and she doesn't know that song. My I got Bonnie. a song. Is this the literal version? So you you're talking about the person you know, Bonnie? What? Bonnie. <laughs> What? She no okay so like the Beatles did a thing before they were they got oh. big Pete Best with Pete Best probably playing drums on it right but they played a song they covered a song for a guy named I think it was Tony Sheridan and it was My Bonnie Bonnie the song was called My Bonnie and I just mentioned that I had a coworker like My Bonnie lies over the ocean My Bonnie lies over the sea yeah Fair someone enough. bring back My Bonnie to me bring back My Bonnie to me and she said that she had a coworker named Bonnie. Who's 65 and doesn't know that song? That's what I was getting to. Mm, okay. Okay. How do you feel about Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler? Oh, that's why you played it. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little more partial to uh, holding out for a hero, but this is good. It's not bad. Have you seen the literal version of this music video on YouTube? Do you know what that is? Do you know what literal music videos are? No. Someone, um, I don't know if they're still up, to be honest. I think they got copyrighted, taken down. Wow. Someone took classic um, music videos 
and change the lyrics to make them literally what is happening in the video. And this is the best one. It's so good. That sounds should... like something we're no, need to really watch. No, it's really good. Later. We should watch it on a, on the smoke break right now. How'd you like your experience, Gabby? It was great. Awesome. I'm no longer vegan. I never was to begin with. Good. Good. Same here. <laughs> You're all. You're obviously welcome to come back on the show anytime. You're welcome you like. to eat more to. brisket, drink more vodka. If you, like, even if the, having... the, the amount of vodka you drank was the only thing I'd criticize about your f- performance. Yeah, I don't tonight. really drink. I'm, I'm much more of a smoker. I'm not a drinker at all. And I uh, that's something home. we need to work on. And hopefully by next time. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> We just, we just talked about beef and it had, had like different interpretations to widen to what your Yeah, so I'm trying to make was. me conform to your idea of beefing, Eric. Oh, uh, uh, I wonder who uh, came up with the I idea of beefing. I think I'm the only real beefer know. here. You know, that's, that's a bold you statement. You know what? I know who wrote the joy beef in it, explained that it didn't have to require alcohol. You know. Take it up with Corey. If it weren't for beef. Wow. There you go. If it weren't for anime and vodka, story. there would be no beef. You're, you're looking pretty anime right now, which is good. But the vodka amount was not I quite I was on the going level. For Italian drug lord in the nineties, but okay. That's anime. <laughs> <laughs> There's an anime that fits that. Quite specifically, JoJo's, JoJo's Bizarre, Bizarre Adventure, Adventure Part Five. <laughs> L- quite literally, Italian crime lords in the nineties. <laughs> Do they dress like this? Yes. Oh, even more fabulous. Oh, I love it. That's so good. Oh, I'm gonna have to show you this. <laughs> JoJo Part Five is. <laughs> so. Anyway, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks uh, for having you me. Can, like, you can show up anytime uh, to hang in. I'll be here tomorrow morning, first thing. Awesome. We won't. <laughs> I, mean, I will. I won't. He will. Yeah, Eric I lives will. Here, so I, I do. You're stuck. I am going to be uh, feeling pretty good tomorrow morning. It's going to be pretty good. From what I can tell now. It's going to be pretty great. It's going to be great. Next time, you me split the bottle. Okay. If I have a ride home. <laughs> if someone wants to drive my ass 20 miles. You know, that's something me and Steve work out. <laughs> it's part of the budget, right, Steve? Yeah. All right, we're good. I'll have to check to Arby's back then. <laughs> Low-key Arby's, though. <laughs> Deep in Cheddar Max. Oh, my God. Mountain. Just, just, like... <laughs> you can't follow up. It's impossible to follow up. You can't be <laughs> cool. I don't want to leave you with anything tonight, folks. It's that you can't fall off and beat them. <laughs> Good night.